Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is going to be the first in a two-part series on building this weird and wonderful contraption. In order to achieve this, we're going to be using four technologies within Cinema 4D. We'll use a combination of Expresso, an IK rig, a line to spline tags, and also dynamics. And in part one, what we're going to be building here, we'll be looking at building this rotating bellows piece, and we'll also build the IK rig for the pump mechanism that actually makes it work. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing I'm going to bring in is an arc. It's in the correct plane, so we don't need to worry about that, but we will make the radius 100, so it needs to be half the size. The end angle can initially start at 40 degrees. I'll hit O so that we can see our object more clearly and just rearrange the window so that we can see what we're doing. Moving on from here, I'll bring in a circle and give this, again, the plane is fine. We can leave that as it is. We'll give it a radius of 18 and also give it an align to spline tag. That's very important. Command drag to copy and give this circle a radius of 17. And then I need 15 circles in total. So command drag with both of them selected and we'll just keep on, oops, didn't want to do that. <laughs> we'll just keep on copying until we get the right number. So we've got 12, 14, and we just need to select the first one and copy that down. And that gives us 15 circles. Moving on from here, we can select all of the align to spline tags and drag the arc into the spline path and we'll also check tangential and now they're set up and they're ready to go. With all of our circles selected I can then hold down command and option and select a loft and that allows us to place all of the circles inside the loft. So that's great, that's fantastic, they're all set up and they're ready to go. I'll rename the loft bellows give it an Espresso tag and we're ready to start working on our first Espresso expression. Let's do a little bit of adjustment here just to move this into place. Okay, I think we're ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to bring in will be a hierarchy. The hierarchy is referencing the bellows piece because the Espresso tag is on the bellows loft object here and that's what we needed to do so that's all working well. I'll bring in an object index and connect these two together and then I need another iterator. Now if you've seen my initial uh, bellows tutorial, my earlier bellows tutorial in which I made a, just a straight bellows this is actually a similar expression to the one that I used there, but it's not exactly the same because we're actually going to be aligning the circles around this arc. So we've got to do things slightly differently, and that's why we've got the aligned spline tags. But I'll put a card up so that you can take a look at that tutorial if you haven't already seen it. But the next thing to bring in will be a tag iterator. So we'll bring one of those in. Connect the instance out here to the object in and straight away that gets rid of the yellow top. With the tag selected we'll in the tag type say that we want a line to spline and then we can bring in an align to spline tag. Just make the window slightly bigger if I can. Let's just drag that out so that we can see what we're doing. At the input stage we'll give it an object port and we'll also give it in the tag properties a position port. We can connect the tags output to the object input. And then to finish this off, we need a math node. So we'll bring that in, calculate math. Its function needs to be divide input to 14. So one less than the number of circles that we've actually got. And then all we need to do is plumb the index into the input one. I'll just move this out of the way so that we can see what's going to happen. And then the output can be plumbed into the position port and straight away 
we align our circles correctly and we get our bellows piece. Now, there is an issue that you may or may not get with the first circle. You may find that it's actually in its Z here, it's actually at zero. If it is, it'll look like this. It looks a bit strange. If that happens, just change that to 90 degrees in there and that will sort it out. OK, so that's just a little bit of error checking that you can do there if you, if you get this issue. To finish this expression off, we need when. Well, first of all, I'm going to just show you how this works. The beauty of this is that this is controlled by the end angle here. So if we bring this down, we can see that we can animate the bellows using just this control, which is great. Actually, works really nicely. What we need to do in order to just finish this off, our odd numbered circles here, they're already at 17 in their radii, whereas the even numbers are at 18. But what we need to happen, we need these to actually get smaller the more the bellows can actually can compress. So when they're being pumped, we want these to actually get smaller in their radii. So that's the next thing that we've got to work out. And let's just bring this back to 40. In order to do that, we bring in the arc. We'll just bring that in. At the output stage, we will give it an end angle port. So that's set up and ready to go. We need a link list. So we'll bring one of those in. And we can plumb the index from the object index. We can plumb that into the index. <laughs> it's all index at the moment of the link list. And then we need to populate the link list. Well, we need all the circles with odd numbers. So one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. They're the circles that we're interested in. So they're now being sequenced by the hierarchy and the object index, which is great. We need a range mapper. So we'll bring calculate range mapper. We'll bring one of those in. And we can plumb the end angle into the input port of the range mapper there. So in our input lower and upper, what are we going to be putting? Let's just get a result node and see what's coming out of the end angle of the arc. Just temporarily plumb that in there. Well, we can see we're getting a small value because this outputs radians. At the moment, it's 0 0.698. So that's 40 degrees expressed as radians. So what we need to do in actual fact, I mean, I know what the sweet spots are for these. So we're going to be working with numbers which will be 0 0.679. And that's effectively 39 degrees because this is what this will ultimately become. And you'll see why a little bit later. So we're going to be working with that as the uh, input lower. The input upper is going to be 0 0.169. And at the outer stage, we want 17 because that's obviously going to be the starting radius for our what we can call inner circles, perhaps. Um, so or our odd numbered circles. So they're 17 and we want them to be 16. So they don't want to go too much, but we'll, we'll move them down to 16 when the thing is compressed. So that's fine. So we'll set that up like that. And then moving on from here, we just need to bring in and we'll remove this result now because we don't need that. We'll bring in a circle. We'll give it a radius port. And we'll also give it an object port. And now all we need to do is connect our link list to here and the output of our range mapper to the radius. And now we should, all things being fair, be set up. So let's just see what happens when we compress. I'll tell you what we'll also do. We'll change the display to garage shading lines and we're already in ISO palms, so that's all good. So let's see what happens when we move this now. And we can see that that's working. They've actually got smaller. And if we select one of them, we can see that it's reduced to 16.0793, which is great. It's all working exactly as it needs to. So fantastic. And if we now bring this back up again, we can see that they open out. So that's working nicely. 
can just set that back to 40 degrees. Fantastic. So we've got all that working. One thing that we do need to do, these have got caps on at the moment. So if we just take our caps away from our bellows piece, just check these off. That's better because we don't need them. There's just no need to have them there. OK, so that's our first little part of this done. We've got the express of expression set up, which is allowing us to animate our bellows piece. And it's all working really nicely. Moving on from here, then we've got to build the actual pump mechanism that's going to make all of this work. And that's our next step. We'll close this expression down and close our bellows. Next thing to do will be to bring in a null. It's at the zero position where it needs to be, but we need to make it minus 40 degrees as its starting point. And we're going to call this pump. We'll get a hold of a tube. And we need to orientate this plus Z. And then we need to start working with its properties. It needs to be a lot smaller, so its outer radius will be four. Its inner radius two. Rotation segments we need eight. Cap segments can be left at one. Its height needs to just be five. And once again, its height segments can be one. This can be dropped into our pump. And then down here, we can just simply zero this out so that it points in the correct direction. Now let's just go into our front view and hit H so that we can see everything. Let's have a look, see where that's actually pointing. Well, it's not quite right, actually. What needs to happen? We need this flat surface, this, this flat polygon here. We need that pointing at 40 degrees. So if we just make this 20, try 20 degrees. And that should be OK for us, I think. It should be pointing in the correct direction. So 20 degrees is where we need that to be. And that's good. That's all looking nice. Let's see where we can move on from here. So what we need to do first is grab a hold of another tube. So we'll copy this one by command dragging. And then what we're going to do is just I'm going to orientate that back to zero. And then I'm going to move it in its coordinates. I want to move it 50 along its X. So let's just make that 50. And then once again, I can orientate that at 20 so that we're pointing in the correct direction. So that's our first two tubes set up. The next step then is to bring in some null objects and we want three of them. And these are going to be used a bit later on, but we need to orientate them correctly. So our first null, I'm going to rename root. I'm going to drop it into here. Now this root null, this must be zeroed out because it needs to be rotated a little bit later on and it will control the rotation of the pump. So we must zero that one out. A null here, we'll call this one because this is actually going to be a joint and we can group this into the root, position it at 50 and that places it dead in the center of our tube here and that's fine. There's no real need to zero this out so I won't bother. And then finally null 2 can be grouped into null 1 and we'll name this T. We'll zero it out and we'll also well, we'll zero it out on the X so that it's in line here and we'll make this minus 22. And that should be fine. That's that's fine for now. And you'll see what we're going to be doing with these a little bit later. We need a cylinder. We'll bring one of those in. And we need to work with it 
to orientate it correctly and resize it. I'll just hit F1 to return to my 3D view. And then we can think about doing this. If we just group it into the pump, just put it under that tube one there. So we need this to be 21 in its radius, four in its height. A single height segment will be fine and we need eight rotation segments. It's currently at 40 degrees. We can zero that out and we should be able to rotate this I tell you what, we'll do the rotate afterwards. Let's just move this into position. Now it wants to go, let's just go back to my front view. I'm gonna do this pretty much by eye. It wants to be about there. I think that'll be fine. We go back to 3D view, so F1 again, and let's see if we can rotate this around its Y axis by 22.5 degrees. And we can, and that's fine. It's lining up really nicely. So we've got all of our three elements here in line with each other, and that's exactly what we need. We'll also make a copy of this cylinder and drop it down here. And I'm going to rename this one Spigot, because that's effectively what it's going to be. And it doesn't really matter so much about the orientation with this one, but we can leave it at... 22.5 what I'm going to do I'm just going to drop this into my circle number 14 and zero it out in fact circle 14 is the wrong circle I should just have put it in circle that's where it needs to go in there and we should just zero that out let's just zero that and zero that that's better and then the orientation can just be zeroed actually it makes no odds and we've well, it's still slightly wrong because we need to change our objects plane here we can make that plus Z so that's all good that's in the right place and this can be dropped down minus two in the Y Oops, rather minus two in the Z. That's better. So if you just check our front view, we can see this is lining up perfectly with the bottom. So that's all fine and dandy, looking good. Okay, so actually with this speaker, we've got, we. I'm not actually, it's, it's probably easier just to give this 60 rotation segments because it doesn't really need to uh, be put into a subdivision surface that way and in the caps we can just put a fillet on it and make it say 0.5 and that should be okay we've got three segments yeah I mean that will be okay for that that's fine because it's just an inanimate object it doesn't do anything and it's fine the way it is so I think we'll leave that like that we'll take this out of the bellows if we can let's just get that out of there place it under there in fact it doesn't even need to go there it's a separate entity really so we'll leave it at the top for now. OK, fantastic. So the next thing to do is to work with the three of these and make them into a single object. So that's the, the next port of call. So let's just select all three of these, hit C to make them editable and then connect objects and delete. So we've got a single tube and that's ready to go. Let's switch to polygon mode live selection visible only is checked which is good because we're going to select individual polygons we'll just get a bit closer just zoom a little bit closer there hold down the shift and select that one and then i can hit mb for bridge and connect those two and we've got a single object same will apply again so hit the space bar to go back to the select tool shift select that one space bar again and then we can go from there to there and we've got a single object and now everything is complete with regards to actually making the base object for this so that's all fantastic the next thing to do hold down the option key and select subdivision surface and then we can work with our tube so we're in the correct mode isosceline editing is not switched on 
we can now switch to edge mode hit ul for loop selection select this loop and hold shift and select this loop just bring this to somewhere there i don't want it fully sharp i want it somewhere there that will be okay and then this loop here can be selected and we can do the same again hold down the full stop key and click and drag and that's looking nice we'll select the inners of this what was formerly a tube and tighten those up like that and we'll also do the same at the bottom just select this loop and this inner loop as well select those and just do that and that looks really nice it's given us a nice result quite a smooth result if we wish to what we can do is tighten these loops here just a little bit uh, we'll just select well, we'll select that one we'll select this one in here so shift select that one and this one here shift select that one and again hold down the full stop key and just drag this back a little bit and I, i'm not going to go fully because i think a little bit of roundness it makes it look like a sort of casting and it's quite a nice look i like that so i'm going to leave that as it is okay that's great so that's our first element of the pump mechanism actually support actually sorted and if we click on this route here and rotate we can see that if we put it in object mode we can see or at least we should see oh we can't see because of course we haven't got things grouped into there have we what have we got yeah it's grouped into the subdivision surface which is in there okay so we need to get our grouping sorted out so this needs to be placed into the route so let's see what we get now we should be able to rotate the route and that rotates that's exactly what we need that's what i was looking for right so the first part of our pump mechanism is now working as we need it to great so the next thing to do is build the link piece and of course the cam follower that will be the final step to giving us the whole mechanism so that's the next job that we need to do just seen a little bit of an error when i was playing around with the route there i've managed to move my two nulls into the into the wrong position what i need to do i just need to remove this temporarily and then set root back to zero and now everything is lining up again that's fine and we can just drop this back into the root okay great that's fantastic so everything is where it should be right let's move on from here so the next thing to do will be to bring in a cylinder we'll orientate it along its plus z plane its radius needs to be 1.8 and you can see that that fits perfectly through the hole that we've got there its height just needs to be 10 it'll need a single height segment and 60 rotation segments and that's fine that's all good in the coordinates we can make it well in fact we don't really we don't really need to worry too much about this because what we can do we can drop this into one and then zero it out let's have a quick look and see where we are in our top view so f2 and then hit o to have a look at the object we just need to move this so that it lines up pretty much with the edge here of our object there now this is in actual fact it, yeah it, it, it needs to go the other way actually just we'll do it that so it doesn't really matter which side you do it but i think i prefer to see it the other side so we'll just line it up like that let's just go in a little bit closer and just drag this back so that it's just proud there that should be okay if anything it could go a little bit smaller actually let's make it um, just make it eight in fact 8.5 I think will be okay for that because that way it's just a tiny bit bigger than twice the width of this yes that will work I think perfectly well okay so that's our first cylinder and then we can command drag to put a second cylinder in t and once again we can zero this out and it should 
work fine if we just zero that let's have a look see where we are actually maybe not in the z let's go into our top view no nope, they're in line that's okay that's perfectly good so we're okay there that's all going to match up that's all good so the next port of call for us is to build the link piece that spans the two cylinders before we go any further we'll just move this cylinder up to here because that's ultimately where it needs to be grouped so at the moment we've got nothing in one but we will the actual link piece that we're going to create now will actually be will actually be grouped into one the joint there so that's what we're going to be doing right so let's see where we are we need to bring in a tube we need to orientate it plus Z as before it needs to be four in the outer radius two in the inner radius its rotation segments will make eight once again cap segments will leave as they are its height will make four and its height segments one so once again we've got it correct and we can drop that tube into one and zero it out that's that and then what we need to do next is rotate it through along its Z we want 22.5 degrees I think or maybe just 20 I think that 20 will be fine I'm just going to switch to my front view and double check I think 20 is fine Let's just go into here well it, is, it might be 22 let's have a look so 22.5 yeah, 22.5. I was right the first time. Okay, that's good. What I'll do is switch to my world coordinates or global coordinates, and I'm going to command drag to create a second one of those and drop that one into T and just zero that out. And that's fine that's all ready to go so the next thing then we can in fact for now take both of these tubes and I suppose we'll leave them in one because that's where they need to be ultimately it doesn't really matter so we'll leave them in there hit C to make them editable and connect objects and delete as we did before so they're where they need to be in terms of their alignment with the cylinders apart from they need to be moved in the Z axis so we'll do that now just move them forward until they line up about there and again we can use by eye for this that's going to be fine like that that should be okay yeah that should work fine I mean it's funny you know but uh, it now looks as if we could do with possibly having that cylinder at 10 in its height but we'll see I'm not going to change that yet because we need to work with these and actually drop them into a subdivision surface so that may make the difference that makes the difference right so let's have a look at this so we need to go into our polygon mode once again zoom in a little bit closer so that we can see where we are select our live selection tool and shift select that one as well MB for bridge and we can bridge across there and we've created our link piece we can now drop this by holding the option key into a subdivision surface and see where we go from here once again I'm going to do the same as I did before so I'll select my tube UL for loop selection and select edge mode select this and this and round the back should be able to get in there and select that one that's fine and the same down here select that one and let's just hold down the full stop key and drag those until we get something that we want there nice and tight that's looking okay yep very nice all looking good so what do we need to do next well we can select this bottom loop so you I'll do you I'll set this bottom loop if I can let's just yep that one I want that one and I also want the top of this one here so if I can just hit the right spot I'll be able to get it 
that's the right spot so hold shift and we've done it and then we can just drag those a little tighter again I'm not going to go fully tight because I want that cast sort of look and yeah that's okay that's that's doing what it needs to do so that's looking good and yes these cylinders they could possibly be 10 let's think about making them 10 so let's select both of them and make them 10 and then we can just reorientate them as we need to let's have a look see where we are yeah they just need to be moved over a little bit don't they just so they're slightly proud I think that that works quite nicely actually yeah that, that looks quite nice okay so we've got that in place and all is ready to go there so next the next thing to do is actually to remove this one cylinder here we'll remove that from T because T doesn't actually need anything in it and that we've now got a hierarchy set up to actually work with an IK tag so on our route we can place an IK tag so come down to rigging tags IK the end will be T and we can see straight away that this is working and we can place an end goal and if we move the end goal now we find that we do get the motion that we want it's behaving as we need it to behave the next thing to do then to finish this piece of this mechanism off is to build the cam follower and that's our next port of call once again I need to bring in a tube orientate it along its plus z axis and once again we need to work with its radii so four two rotation segments eight cap segments one that's fine height five this time and one in the height segments we need to place this inside T and zero it out that's fine because we can remove it from there we'll work with it up here actually probably easiest place to work with it and we've got our object sorted out we just need to rotate it 22.5 and it's ready to go going to actually I won't go into the front view yet because that is in the correct position it's, it's absolutely in the correct place so what I need to do is just simply hit C to make it editable and in polygon mode I just need to select the bottom polygon and then all I need to do is extrude this now its radius we know is 4 so its diameter is 8 already so I need to hit D and then extrude 42 because I want this to have an overall length of 50 so 42 that's fine that's all looking good and then what I also need to do is just KL for a loop cut and put a cut about there again this is all by eye it doesn't really matter that much but what I'm also going to do is just get a little bit closer select edge mode and what I want are my two edges here and then I'm going to bring those closer to each other now let's just see if we can get the axis sorted out um, orientation object oh, let's have a look select here to make it Let's have a look object and object hopefully that's okay and then if we can just where are we let's have a quick look see where the right okay not quite in the right place is it selected is, is certainly where that needs to be and roots that's what I want and then I just need to bring those in along the x-axis that's fine that's all good okay we can then once again hold down the option key and select a subdivision surface and we've now got our cam follower 
looking a lot smoother but we've still got a little bit more work to do because again we've got to ul to loop select select the inner and select the inner this side the inner loop this side hold down the full stop key and then drag those in and once again we'll do a little bit of tightening with this loop here just tighten that up so it's about there and that should do fine for us I think that will work if we wanted to we could tighten this a little bit I don't want to go too mad with it though because I think that that will look quite nice that works quite well as it is so I'm going to leave that like that so that's our cam follower built if we just bring this down here I will place a null in the scene and what I'll do is group this null into this cylinder and zero it out zero that out so that's in the correct place with regards to being in the center of our cam follow up along its x axis and then we can just drop this down to the the tip here let's see where we are let's just get a little bit closer yeah it just wants to be right on the tip and that should be fine by eyes again it's it's perfectly good it'll be okay you can always adjust afterwards if you need to but that's fine so that's good that's in position and it's it's looking as if it's in the right sort of place if we want to we can put it dead center of the cam follower and that's probably not a bad idea so let's just do that see where it is actually if we get a null can we if we take it out of there should be able to just zero it out and it should be in the correct place so that's fine that's exactly where it needs to be and we can just call this cam follower and then group the cam which is here into this and just rename that cam right so that's actually grouped or is it is it grouped correctly I'm not sure whether it is or not no it's not grouped into the cam follower it needs to be grouped into there okay that's fine so that's in the correct play place and this cylinder here can also be grouped under the tube so that it's in the cam follower and now they're all where they need to be the only other thing that we need to do is also group our T goal into the cam as well and now if we move the follower we find that everything is working perfectly it's doing exactly what we needed to do so that's great that's the, the, the actual mechanism for moving the pump and, ult and ultimately of course pumping the actual bellows all in place and all working the next thing we need to do is some more espresso because when this rotates we need the bellows to actually react accordingly and that's the next thing we've got to do this next expression needs to be placed on T that's where it needs to go so we'll give this the espresso tag and we're ready to start work the first thing we can drag in is the root so we'll bring that in and at the output stage we will give it a coordinates rotation B port we'll also bring in the arc and at the input stage give that an end angle port because of course that's what we want to control between the two of them we simply need a range mapper so we'll bring that in plumb this into here and this into here at the moment we're getting nothing because of course it's not set up so we need to set up our input ranges our input ranges are going to be 0 to 25 now before we do that actually let's just put that back as it was 
we need to change these ranges. They both need to be degree. So we'll change those to degree. So this will be 25 degrees. And in the output range, we will start at 39 and we will end at 14 degrees. That's what we need to do. And this should now work. If we move our cam follower, we should find it works. Sure enough, it does. And it looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? So that's fabulous. That's taken care of all of that. The only other thing we need to do before we end this tutorial is to actually work out what we're going to do here and down at the bottom here. We just need to bring in a couple of flanges just to finish this off really. So let's do that. Let's get two tubes and start work with those. It needs an outer radius of 21, an inner radius of 18, 60 rotation segments to make it nice and round. Its height needs to just be reduced to one because it only needs to be a very thin flange and we just need one height segment. I will put a fillet on it and I'll make it 0.2 just to make it that a little bit nicer. This first one I'm going to just group into the spigot and zero it out. Let's just place it there, zero it out on the Z, and then we can move it into position. So let's just see where we are. Let's just move this up until it just sits on top of the flange, uh, top of the flange, on top of the spigot, I should say. So that just sits there and that just finishes that off. It makes it look quite nice. I'll command drag to copy one of these and then we can place this let's have a look see where we are pretty sure we can place this into one of our circles for our bellows piece let's have a look see where we are it's number 14 I think it needs to go in yeah if we just drop it into number 14 that should work I think where are we there's our tube just bring it down here, drop it in there and zero that out. So that's in the correct place. Let's just uh, take that orientation back to and just do that as well. Just zero it out for what it is. And then we've, all we've got to do is just rotate this into position. So that it's somewhere there. It's not quite the right size, but we need to just take a quick look at what we've got here in order to make it correct it's just let's just go into our front view actually object just to make doubly sure that we've got it correct it looks pretty good let's just move that actually in our object mode just move that down a little bit until it's there and then we can just make some minor adjustments on the rotation just rotate it into the correct place and that's about right I think for that just bring it back up into there and let's see where we are okay yeah I mean we're, we're sort of okay-ish aren't we what we can do here is just make this slightly bigger if we wish to and that wouldn't be a bad idea I don't think it would make too much difference if we did that uh, or there's another option we can simply get just remove that from there what I've got to do is actually put it in let's have a look where we are it's got to go in the pump so it needs to go into here just underneath there what we need to do in fact is probably get a hold of circle 14 and what we can do in actual fact is reduce its radius we can just bring that in so that it's like that and then all we've got to do is just work with our tube here and just play around with this so if we bring this into say 17 we can bring this in a little bit to say 19 and that will work that will actually work it looks quite nice and it doesn't actually interfere with what's going on with our 
bellows piece if we just bring this down you can see that it still works perfectly fine so i think that's a good option if we just do that with that i think that works okay i think that looks good yeah that's going to be okay i mean we're not going to finish this off completely i mean that would have like little bolts holding it on there and the same here we put those in if we were really going to finish this off but i'm not going to put those in uh, but uh it's all looking very very nice it's it's working very well so yeah we've got our bellows piece all working perfectly and our pump mechanism is all working perfectly and it really does look nice it's very pleasing to the eye so yeah that's how you do it that's how you do this first part of making this weird and wonderful contraption that brings us to the end of the first tutorial so whatever you do be sure to tune into part two when if we just switch to my original file in part two we'll, we'll just be making this cam we'll be making this so that it drives the actual cam follower and also here we'll be using some dynamics to make this cylinder rise up and down in here i like the idea of making this with dynamics because it looks well a little bit less computer graphic-y as i often say uh, and of course we'll put this helical tubing in as well and the cone that goes on the end of here that's what we're going to be about in the next tutorial so please tune in anyway that brings us to the end of this first part in this two-part series I really do hope you've enjoyed this one and that it's been worthwhile doing and that you've learned a few techniques that you can use in your own projects and if you have enjoyed the video then please give it a like and of course if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel leave a comment and of course ring the bell and wherever you happen to be on social media then please please share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction but anyway that just about wraps this one up so I'll see you very soon in part two of this tutorial.